Hello friends, this video on combustion and flame part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we understood what is combustion, which kind of substances undergo combustion. Now what do you think? Do you think that combustion can happen just any time we want? So a substance, maybe a paper will just start burning on its own any time. Had that been the case, then every time it would have been fire everywhere and everything would have got burned by now. But that doesn't happen, right? For a paper to catch fire, there are certain criteria which needs to be fulfilled. So only when those criteria are fulfilled, only then the process of combustion actually take place. So here we will talk about those three important criteria without which combustion can never happen. And what are the three criteria? The first is a fuel, a combustible substance is needed because until and unless you have a combustible substance. So obviously, which object will catch fire? So you need to have a substance which easily catches fire. You need air. Why do you need air? Because as I mentioned before also that oxygen is extremely important for combustion to take place. What happens during combustion? The substance reacts with oxygen. So without oxygen, there will be no reaction. There will be no energy released. And the third criteria is heat. Now the question is why do we need heat? We need heat because we need to increase the temperature of the substance to a particular temperature so that it can catch fire. Now we are going to talk about each of these points in more detail one by one and we will see that how each of these criteria is important for combustion to take place. Now the first point that is combustible substance this we have already discussed that not all substances readily burn. So those substances which easily burn to produce a lot of heat and light, they are called combustible substance and one such combustible substance has to be present for combustion to take place. So now we will talk about the second factor that is air. Why is air necessary for combustion? Now in order to understand this, what we will do is we will do a small experiment or we will do a small observation rather. So for this what we need is a candle, a candle which is already lit. So with this lighted candle what we do, what, what, what do you see right now? So the candle is lit and it's like perfectly it's glowing. The flame is seen distinctly. Now I take a glass and just put the inverted glass over this candle. What happens? The candle still glows for some more time, but after some time, it goes off. The flame goes off. Why? Why did this happen? Because we did not do anything to blow, to blow off the candle. So, whatever you observe till now, just do one thing. Just note down the time for which the candle was lit even after the inverted glass was put over it. Initially it was glowing. We put the glass. It still glowed for some time. So let's note that time. So let's say it glowed for some time say T1 seconds and after that it went off. So why did it go off? Because when we have put this glass we have actually limited the amount of air which is being provided to the candle. When the glass was not there, there was plenty of air surrounding the candle. So it was utilizing the air and the process of combustion was taking place. But now when we have put this glass, so it is only that much amount of air which could be accommodated inside this glass. So only this much air is available to the candle. So the candle utilized all the air which is present inside this glass. But after that there is no air. When there is no air, there is no oxygen. When there is no oxygen, no combustion can happen. And therefore, it just went off. Right? So that's the first set of experiment which tells us that air or oxygen is necessary for combustion. Now we will do a little more experiment with the same thing. Now what I do is I take the same candle but now I change the glass. I take a bigger glass. So when you take a bigger glass what happens? Again the candle will blow for some time and note down the time in this case. 
So let us suppose this time, the time is say t2 seconds. Now what you will observe here is this time, the time for which the candle was glowing before it again obviously here also it will go off after some time because he can here also you we have put a limitation so it can only utilize the air which is there inside this glass but what we observe is t2 is greater than t1 that means the time for which the candle lighted in the second case is more than the time for which the candle was on in the first case why that is because in the second case the glass was bigger. Second case, it was a big glass and in the first case, it was a small glass. So when the glass was small, there was less amount of air. So there was less amount of oxygen available. So therefore, the candle could light only for some time. But in the second case, the glass was bigger. So larger amount of air was present inside the glass. So larger amount of oxygen was present. Therefore, the process of combustion could happen for a little longer time and therefore the candle lighted for a little longer than case one. So this experiment further proved that yes, air plays a very critical role for combustion. Again, if you want to experiment with the same apparatus, what you can do is maybe you can just lift this glass a little bit upwards. So when you lift it a little bit upward, what happens? A gap is created here. Now, right now the glass is placed inverted on the surface or on the table. But if you lift it a little upward, what happens is a gap is created here. So some amount of air will enter through these gaps. Therefore, in this case, the candle will not immediately go off. Instead, it will start to flicker. And why the flame flickers? The flame flickers due to limited supply of oxygen or due to insufficient supply of oxygen. So these experiments prove that air is very, very necessary for combustion. In fact, you can try out this experiment also. You will find it interesting. You will say that in one case you take one candle and cover it with an inverted glass. In the second set instead of one candle you take three candles and cover it with an inverted glass of the same size. Now what do you observe? In the first case the candle glows for some time and then goes off. And in the second case also all the three candles they glow for some time and then go off. So let's suppose in this case the time for which they remain lighted after the glass is being put is T2 and in this case let's say it is T1. So in this case which will be more? In this case we will see that T1 is greater than T2 because here the amount of air which is available in both the cases is same because the glass is of the same size. But in this case the, there is only one candle to consume that air. But in this case, there are three candles to consume oxygen from that air. So the contenders are more. Therefore, each of them get only one third of the air which is present inside the glass. Therefore, the candles go off faster than in case of the first scenario. So it is seen that a single candle burns for longer time than three candles when covered by the same glass. So all these experiments with candles and glass proves that uh, combustion cannot take place without air, without oxygen. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.